Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Kirk Bresniger talking about Project Odyssey and Mission Critical on x86. So what exactly is Project Odyssey? Project Odyssey is our new um, vision of mission critical computing in the 21st century, a uh, environment in which traditional Unix environments on our Itanium integrity platforms are side by side with mission critical Linux and Windows natively on x86. So does that mean, uh, I mean, so obviously you're developing some things around the, the Xeons in parallel with Itanium then, but does that mean that we're going to see some of the things that have currently been part of Itanium and unique to Itanium come over to the x86 side of things? Uh, yeah, so that's uh, it's going to happen at every level. So we uh, partner extremely closely with Intel as we've done on the development of Itanium, and we partner with them very closely as well on the development of x86 uh, Xeon futures. What features should be moved over, what features can be moved over, but that's just sort of the enabling condition, necessary but not sufficient. What we also have to do is work through the firmware, the system design, the operating system design, so all those pieces are working in, in concert. Then we need to have globally available technical services that can provide the service and support of a 24 by 7 mission critical environment. So for us, it's taking that IP we have, 30 years of nonstop, 30 years of VMS, 25 years of HPOX, and selectively moving that IP over into the appropriate level, whether it be partnering with a kernel.org, a specific Linux distribution, uh, or bringing our own technology like our service guard for Linux a fault tolerant, mission critical middleware suite over to x86. So you're really talking about mission critical that is available whether you're using HPUX or whether you're using something like a Red Hat or, or any other distribution. It's, this is not really about trying to lock customers into a HP specific, specific path. That's correct. Uh, you know, if we look at the mission critical, we have customers all over the world. Some of them just want to continue with HPUX forever, and as long as they want to buy HPUX, then we'll be there to help them deliver it. Uh, other customers want to have that mission critical environment as they know today, but they know they need to be exploring alternative technologies. They need to understand, is Linux a more cost-effective solution? Is, does x86 provide a more common cost-effective architecture for them to base their her very heterogeneous environment on? And we want them to be able to choose that literally on a slot-by-slot uh, basis inside of a Super Dump 2 enclosure or an HP Blade system enclosure. So, what sort of specific challenges are you guys helping people solve with this big vision? Well, I think it's it's the same uh, problems that we've had uh, for the last 25 years in mission critical computing. When we look where HP has been phenomenally successful uh, in mission critical computing. 80% uh, of cell phone traffic authorized by HP nonstop platforms. 90% of the emergency uh, response calls in the United States delivered on a nonstop platform. The majority of the world's largest stock exchanges, uh, large numbers of distribution manufacturing companies. You know, you can't put uh, soda in a bottle these days without having an, an ERP program that's running 24 by seven. And those mission critical platforms need to scale, they need to be available, but they also, uh, customers need to have more and more costs pulled out of those. Uh, and so that's really what we're trying to do, is give them freedom of choice to have whatever architecture they want, to have whatever um, operating system they want, and have those be on a common converged infrastructure so that today they can be all on HPUX, non-stop and VMS, as they see fit, whether that's in two years, five years, or 10 years, begin to bring in Linux, begin to bring in Windows for scalable mission critical x86. Are you guys at the point yet where you're doing any um, experimentation with customers around uh, migrating off of um, what's currently the HPUX world and into any of the other uh, distributions, or is this still early stage? Well, certainly uh, we have um, already platforms that uh, are pointing us in this direction. We have the, the DL980, our current scalable Xeon 8-socket product, uh, a highly available system where we took the scalability chipset technology from our Superdome 2, our SX3000 chipset, originally designed for Itanium, uh, but because Intel uses common technology, QPI, QuickPack, and Interconnect, to stitch together uh, both Itanium chips in an integrity platform or Xeon 
chips inside of a ProLiant platform, we were able to marry those two technologies together, giving us uh, the most scalable eight socket Xeon platform. Now, uh, there's many aspects to mission critical computing. Some are raw capacity points, uh, some are scalability points, and then there's the tremendous availability and reliability concerns. For us, the DL980 is that first move towards a very scalable and highly reliable uh, x86 platform, and what we see coming up with uh, the products that we announced in uh, the Project Odyssey announcement, uh, the Hydrolink scalable blades inside of the C7000C3000 for two, four, eight socket mission critical Xeon, and then our Superdome 2 platform, uh, up to 32 socket scalable Xeon platforms, uh, we think are going to be that next generation uh, from the hardware side. Then of course, again, complementing with firmware, complementing with operating system, and finally, HP technical services to bring the whole thing together. Now, something that we talked about but before we started the interview, it sounds like some of this is actually possibly going to be open sourced. Uh, certainly, we want to make sure that um, we work in concert with the open source community. So there are some features of, um, of mission critical like the large scale. You really need to drive that into kernel.org. So part of our announcing Project Odyssey and, and embarking on this two plus year journey to get to mission critical x86, part of the reason we're announcing it now is to engage with the community. I think we've seen lots of recent effort by large companies that have disenfranchised and disaffected open source projects and causing them to fork and, and create divisions in the communities that's not serving anyone uh, well. Uh, we want to engage with these communities. We have literally centuries of engineering expertise in highly scalable, highly available systems. Uh, where appropriate, yes, we'll be driving that into the appropriate open source community, uh, working in concert with them, you know, putting our SWEC equity in there, uh, offering RIP uh, into the open source community so that we can drive some of those base things across all the possible distributions customers will be interested in. Is there anything else that we should know about Project Odyssey? Um, I think that for us this is, uh, it is a project that's under development, and I think uh, we really want to solicit uh, input from our customers. Uh, we know that we have some customers who uh, need an executable mission critical Linux plan, uh, and other customers, they need a demonstrable plan. They know that they need to have this on their radar. They want to find out the way that they can get to this, uh, but they don't necessarily need to do it you know, in the next two years. It might be five or, or even 10 years out. So, for those customers, we want them to, to know that uh, we continue our investments in engineering on HPX and nonstop and VMS unabated, uh, and this is for us to augment those capabilities. And I think where we find ourselves unique is that we're offering this choice of all operating systems, all architectures in one platform rather than relegating a customer to one silo for mainframe, one silo for Unix, one silo for x86, and not allowing them to have cost savings and, and common procedures, common um, uh, repair components across the entire environment. So I think that's where we're offering something that's unique. All right, well thanks, Kirk. Thank you, Jake.